In this video, I'm going to continue teaching you about multiple sclerosis clinical research. Today's lecture is focused on randomization. Don't turn away because that starts right now. Hey! Howdy! Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. I'm the founder of the Boster Center for Multiple Sclerosis, where we care for families impacted by MS from around the globe. I'm currently doing an educational lecture series, helping you up your game in your understanding of MS clinical trials and MS clinical research. Today's video is focused on randomization, but if you haven't checked out my previous videos on the topic, check out that playlist right there and you can get yourself caught up. So let's discuss the concept of randomization and why it is critically important when conducting an MS clinical trial. Let's imagine together that we have a study drug that we think is awesome. It's going to be the next best thing in MS, and we need to test it in a clinical trial to find out if, in fact, that's true. So we're going to conduct a trial where we ask a bunch of human beings with MS to participate, and we're going to either put them on study drug or we're going to put them on something else. Now, as you've heard in my other recent videos, the something else in the modern era is not placebo. It's not a dummy drug. Why? Because in 2021, here in the United States, we have 25 different formulations of available MS medications. So it would be unethical to enroll a human in a trial where they randomly either got a study drug or dummy drug, when they could take a bunch of drugs that are currently already approved. So we're going to instead do study drug or an active comparator, something that's already been approved by the FDA and that we know works. And as these patients uh, agree to participate in the trial and go through the consent process, we're going to stick them in one of the two groups. The question is, how do we stick them in each group? And it actually is super important. Think about this. The ultimate question that we're trying to answer is, is this drug awesome in treating MS? Now, the best way to figure that out, the most accurate way to figure that out, is to enroll every human being on planet Earth with MS, all 2.3 million or whatever that really large number is and give half of them study drug and half of them the other drug. And we would find out in the entire population of MS the answer. And that's insanely crazy. We can't do that. It's too expensive. It would take too long. There's a million reasons why we can't do that experiment. So what we have to do instead is we have to take a small sampling of that population. We take a sample of the population and we run the experiment in the sample and then we generalize it to the rest of the folks with MS. But there's a concern when you grab a sample. And in specific, when you divide this sample in half, when you put half the people on study drug and put half the people on the active comparator, you really need those to be comparable samples. They need to be really similar because you don't want to introduce bias into the trial. And I'll give you a couple examples. If you sign people up and put very motivated patients, people that were like jumping up and down and like super, super excited into uh, one of the arms and put people that really didn't care and kind of admitted to you that they didn't really want to participate and they probably weren't going to follow the instructions and you put them in the other group, that non-random assignment might bias the results of the trial. If you instead flip a coin for every single individual human, and then randomly assign the heads to go into the group that's going to take steady drug and tails to be the group that takes the active comparator, you should end up with an equal number of people that are very motivated in both groups. And you should have an equal number of people that really aren't that interested in both groups. And so they're balanced. Another example, let's say that you chose to put all of the men into one arm of the trial and all the women in the other. Well, by separating out the two genders, you may end up biasing the results of the trial. So what makes a lot more sense, again, is you flip a coin for every single human, independent of gender, and randomly assign them based on heads or tails to one group or the other. In doing so, what you'll find is you'll have an equal distribution of men in both sides and an equal distribution of women in both sides. So very commonly, what we'll see is both groups will have 70% women, 30% men. And that way, there's no bias. Now, why is this so important? It's because we're conducting an experiment to try to determine if a medication works well to treat MS. And we want the results of the experiments to reflect the, the effect of the drug on the people. 
not um, something else. We don't want it to be because of a gender bias or because of some other enrollment bias. We need to remove that variable so that it's not a factor. That way, the only reason that someone got better, let's say, was because of study drug, not because of some other factor. And randomization is a key element that makes that possible. So here's how you do that. As people come in, you flip a coin, and then you randomly stick them in this group or that group. If you do that with a large enough sample, by randomization, naturally, you're going to end up with balanced groups. By randomization alone, you should have about the same number of women in this group as you do in this group. You should have about the same number of ethnic minorities in this group as you do in this group. You should have about the same number of people that have had contrast on their MRIs in this group as you have in that group. And we go through this randomization process where we randomly assign people into two different groups. In the clinical trial, one of the very first tables that is published is the baseline characteristics where we look at how successful the randomization was and if, in fact, it worked, whether they're balanced. And I'll tell you something. If they find out they're not balanced, you can't interpret the study results. And that's happened in a couple clinical trials. So randomization is a super important concept, and it's critical in the beginning of any clinical trial. It's why when you enter into a trial, you're randomly assigned to be in group A or group B. If you'd like to learn more concepts like randomization to better understand MS clinical research and to up your game about MS clinical trials, click the video playlist that's on your screen right now. My name's Aaron Boster, and as always, I want to thank you for learning about MS with me. Until my next video, or the next time I see you at the Boster Center for MS, this is Aaron B. saying, be safe and take care.